Our New Testament reading this morning is going to be Luke chapter 2, verses 41 through 52, which may be found on page 934 in your pew Bibles. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Now every year, his parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, They returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who were with him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. This is the word of God for us this day. Amen. Well, this is, friends, our last worship of 2012. I don't know if everybody's as amazed as I am, but uh, yeah, what a year it has been. 2012 has been a very intense year, amen? Very intense, very intense. So we want to, on this Sunday, Engage in a somewhat different way. This is not going to be a typical sermon. I would like you to pull that hymnal that's closest to you and grab a hold. There are two parts to this part of our service. And uh, the first part uh, has to do with, as we were talking with the kids about, Christmas carols, which our hymnal has a number of. Now, if you look at Carol, I learned some things this week that surprised me, but the surprise, the surprise is coming. The surprise is in part two coming up. The first meaning of Carol in the dictionary is what we all think it is, a song of praise or joy, especially for Christmas. Amen? Ah, the adults knew it already. Okay. So that means a song of praise or joy, especially for Christmas. So, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel is not a Christmas carol, right? It's a song of longing. It's uh, waiting for the Messiah. It's not a song of praise or joy. Amen? So if you turn in your hymnal to the birth and baptism hymns are starting on page 217 with Away in a Manger. And before that, you have several hymns, not too many, about the promised coming, some of those we sang during Advent. And so we have for the birth and baptism section about uh, over 30, about 30, from 217 to 254, 35 about, 35 hymns. So what we want to do at the very beginning is to allow you, to give you the chance to sing a few you didn't get to sing this season. And I always have some people who come and say, how come we can't sing Joy to the World during Advent? Because what happens after Advent is what is happening today. You've got about one more Sunday. That's it. (laughs) Until the next year, right? So, I'm going to take the first hands that go up. We're going to do three or four, just probably just the first verse of carols that you love and didn't have a chance to sing, or you did have a chance to sing and just want to do it again. And then we'll go on to part two. So, what would you like to sing, friends? Here, here. Oh, okay, Betty. <laughs> just hang oh, on. Maybe into the next section, 
250. Oh, yes. The vi uh, actually, that is the very last one in Go Tell It on the Mountain. Yeah, because when Jesus came to Jordan, it's not a Christmas carol. But they just happen to have that heading up there still. Um, so let's go through Go Tell It on the Mountain. Now, Betty has set us a challenge. Because to sing this carol weekly, W-E-A-K-L-Y, weekly, is not appropriate. You know, go tell it, go tell it on the mountain. Uh-uh, go tell it on the mountain. So let's sing out. Now, there are fewer of us here today than usual, so you're going to have to sing a little harder. And kids, if you don't know the words, but you want to go la, la, la right along with us, please feel free, or you want to clap your hands. It actually works for this one. Okay, let's go, Greg, let's try it. Let's just do verse one. So it's ABA, we do the refrain, we do the verse, we come back to the refrain. something you have to have to keep up with number two okay another hand oh does he have one yeah oh okay okay another another one 249 yeah this is a very nice carol we don't sing it very often there's a song in the air it's all this is all about um Kind of focusing on Mary. We almost sang it uh, in the Mary time, but um, I chose a couple other things instead. But okay, there's a song in the air, verse one. It's kind of in waltz time. Do, do, do. just because it's kind of hard to stop with that. We rejoice in the light and we echo the song that comes down through the night. I wish unto the lovely evangel they bring and we greet in his cradle Two forty. Two forty. Now I think that "Hark the Herald Angels Sing" is the only Christmas carol that was written by Charles Wesley. Who, if you look in the index of your hymnal, you will find wrote more hymns. Not the music, but the hymn, which means not the hymn tune, but the hymns, which means the words, than anybody else in our hymnal. Whole lots of them, but only one that got really well known at Christmas, and it's Heart to Herald Angels Sing. So let's do verse one. Try this. When you get to the refrain on pay on the second page, sing louder. Let's see if we can hear the difference, okay? If the pitch gets hot well, it doesn't kind of gets higher, not really, but let's see if we can get a little louder on the chorus, okay. Joy 
Do we want to do one more? Two twenty-eight. All right. Any of you um, speakers of French here want to sing it in French? Go ahead. Um, whether it's mutilated or good, we we're, we're not judging here. Uh, another one in three four, and this one really is is a is a real kind of a dance um, rhythm. Okay, just first first. dictionary surprised me. It is in the most recent American Heritage edition, an old round dance. Now, I don't know what's the difference. What is a round dance? Does it mean circular dance, maybe? Round dance? Often accompanied by singing. And a few, there are whole several words that, that for the word carol that go back. But it, if you go all the way back to the Greek word choros, that was a choral dance. Now, I sure didn't know that. I always thought Carol was just, <coughs> Christmas Carol was just singing. But in the history of Christian tradition, at certain times and certain places during the Middle Ages, people danced when they sang carols. And the best known form of that dance was something called the Tripudium, which means what would you guess? Now, I know some of you know because we were talking, but if, you, if, you, if you're here as an innocent, okay, friends, you're an innocent, what do you think tripudium might mean? Well, three of something. That's right. Now, I would have thought it was three feet, and, which means three left feet. Sometimes we, you know... It actually means three steps, three steps. Um, and it also, in terms of how it got used in the Middle Ages in certain places, it meant joy. It meant joy. So when you're doing a dance to a carol that is a tripudium, you wouldn't do it to O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, okay? Not that kind of music. So... I want to, to, uh, to try it today, and you can take this as an adventure, a laboratory, <laughs> or definitely co-creation. And I want to show you how it looks, and then I'm going to invite everyone who's willing to try to come to the center aisle. So just let me show you what it looks like. Including choir. <laughs> like now, I am not someone who follows pattern, step patterns easily, I will tell you, absolutely. But here it is. If I can do it, anybody can. It's one, two, three, back. One, two, three, back. So they call it three, but it's really four beats to the music, right? It's one, two, three, back. Now, I suppose if you got fancy, you could do one, two, three, kick. Well, I just, I leave that to the talented ones among us. Now, you can get on the websites and find tripudium dances. And the one I looked at was a small group of people, only about 10 maybe. Uh, now, they were joining hands. So if we, we may try to do that at the end. because But that means that you're kind of going in one direction, you know, 
like this, or you're going sideways. But I don't think we're not going to do sideways today. We're just going to do this. But let's try it. So I'd like it if you're willing to give it a try. Step up. Just stand up and come to a place where you have some space. It may not be in the center aisle. And kids, you're welcome to. We're not all going to be perfect here. We're going to have fun. So let's do angels from the realms of glory with a quarter and one of eight. <laughs> Which is 220. So let's start it uh, since I've had since I've had time to practice. <laughs> let's. Uh, why don't you all come and kind of get in some kind of a line here? We're going to want to be in a line at least to start. <laughs> So that's Look at that. We're going to have enough people. Now, here's the deal. If you, if you, if it's not physically appropriate or you don't want to participate, that's fine. But what do we expect from you sitting here? Wow. <laughs> because some of us are going to be trying to negotiate our bodies. And singing at the same time is not going to be an option. Amen? So we really need what all the What are we singing? Yeah. This, let's go all around. Well, just make a circle around the center. Yeah, the choir, the choir folks come on down. Yeah, we are. Marjorie's taking lead. And then you guys, we're going to figure out. Yeah, we're going to figure it out. So we're going to do it first with, let's, let's move a little without the music. So wherever you are, and just kind of fall in as you can. We'll, we may change how we're doing this around, but it's left, right, left. Do something. Yeah. Left, <laughs> right, left, do something. I don't know what you call it. Okay, we're just gonna right, follow around. Left, left, left. Okay, we got it. Alright, so what is our next one, right? Yeah. Hartford Herald Angels Sing, 240. 
Okay, and that's good. We're going to pick it up a little bit. Show us what the tempo. Just, just play a phrase or two so we can hear the tempo in the kids. So now let us, you know, well, as soon as we get.
yet let's have a prayer while you're still standing and then we'll then we'll sit and 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 hold on take a hand of somebody near you get connected where we've been rhythmically and mobily connected but let's get tactically connected here please join me in prayer gracious god we love you And we have just sung and moved in joy and praise out of gratitude that you have brought us through the challenges and the blessings of the year 2012. Some of us have made resolutions. Some of us have resolutions still to make. Some of us may be inspired with some little piece or direction for the year out of what we have just shared. Lord, whether it's co-creation, a laboratory, or an adventure, Lord, or all those things, when we gather together, two or three or many, your spirit is is present in a special place, and we are grateful. May the joy we have experienced here on this last Sunday be a prelude to blessings beyond what we can imagine in church, in family, in community, in nation and world in 2013. And God's people moved their feet, took a breath, and said, Amen. 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 Please sit down.